Let's take a look at section 4.3, which is all about the for loops. This is our count control loop. Uh, again, there's a video from our author, so Tony Gaddis right here. So the for loop video, the link is here. And uh, it's also available in Canvas, so don't forget about that. So on a count control loop, we're going to iterate or, or run through a specific number of times. And we're going to use a for statement for that. So our the, the, the format is the same type of format. We're just going to include a list, at least in this one, uh, so you can check it out. So our, our uh, format here is, is for, and then you'll see, you know, whatever type of variable in. And then you'll see these square brackets. And we'll talk about those in, in a little while, too. But that's a simple list. We're going to put together a list of things. And we'll see a whole chapter on lists later on. Uh, and you can do all sorts of cool stuff with them, so it's kind of fun. So let's take a look at how this actually works. And you'll see a graphic here, and then we're going to look at the actual code in this. And if this was the, the you know, the code that we're, we're checking out in here. So here we have four, and then num is our variable. So it could be, you know, x, or it could be any kind of, kind of variable name. And then we're going to use n. Uh, so we're saying for whatever the, the, the variable num is in this particular uh, list. And here we have a list of five different things. Spacing doesn't matter in here between with the commas or separated by commas, but uh, that really did, the spacing doesn't matter at all. Uh, just This is just to make it easier to, to read. So just like other things we've done. So we're going to say for num in, and it's got uh, these values in here, we're going to go ahead and print num. So the first time through, it's going to go ahead and num. Here we go with our target variable. We've got one. Next time we go two, three, four, and all that. So let's take a look at the actual uh, code here. And, and, and here we go. So I'm going to say visualize. And then as I step through this, it's going to go ahead and say, okay, here's num. Uh, here's the value that is one. And it will print that out. Then we'll go through and simply sign it to two. It's going to keep going. And you'll see it walks through each time, changing the value, going through the list. When it gets to the end of the list, that is the end of the program. And that's it. We're all done. So this particular program, obviously, but not much to it. Uh, so so anyway, so there's that. Now, you can do this with lots of different things. So for example, if we look at the next slide, and you'll see on this that, okay, this time I have a statement. So I'm saying, okay, I'll display the numbers 1 through 5, which is what we just did. Or you can say, I'll display the odd numbers 1 through 9. So my list has the odd numbers 1 through 9. So this is, again, walking us through. And we can even do one that has uh, strings in it. So, so here's our strings. We can use a single quote or double. So if we take a look at this particular uh, code in here, we go back to edit. So here, this is the same kind of a thing. We just saw this one. So let's just, um, just because, let's just dump all these out of there. We'll get rid of that one. Uh, and then we'll see these other ones work. So I'm going to say visualize. And as I walk through here, this first loop is walking through, printing the numbers one through nine. So here it goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then it's going to do the same thing. It only executes three times because it only has three values here uh, for this particular name one with these wonderful names in there. And then it's over. Now, one of the nice things that you can do in this is, um, I'm just going to dump this. Uh, and then, But one of the nice things you could do in Python, uh, we don't have to keep this mutually exclusive to just integers. So I can go ahead and put in a value, oops, a value hello. So I can have a string in there. I can have a float. Okay, so you can do that. And then when I go to, to visualize, it will simply walk through and print those out. Obviously, my statement's not true here, but that's okay. Uh, so I'm just printing out those different things. So this is a beauty of using lists, and we'll talk a lot more about that in another chapter. But we can mix up the data types, so which is a major pain in the rear end if you're trying to do it in uh, some, some other languages. So uh, so anyway, so there's that, uh, that, that little nice, nice option for you. Okay, so let's take a look. So we've done now some, you've seen some basic, uh, some basic for loops using just this little uh, uh, list in here. But let's take a look at range because this is a really nice feature that we can use. Okay, so in the uh, range function, let me go ahead and click on this. It's the next slide in here. So uh, using the range function with a for loop. So the range function just makes things really, really easy. So the way this sets up is you have um, the, the characters. It'll make more sense when we see the code. But uh, you have different types of things that you can do. So you can use one argument, two, or three. Uh, and I put a little thing on here. Any limit works like less than. So it does not include the actual value itself. So we'll take a look at this and we'll see what each one of these will do. And again, it'll make more sense on the next slide, I think. So um, here we take a look at some different uh, some different pieces that we have here. 
as you look at this slide, we have three different range statements that we're going to use, three different uh, you know pieces here. So we've got X, Y, and Z, and they're using the three different types. So here we have one argument with just five. Here we have two, and then here we have three. So let's take a look and see what the differences are here. Okay, so and I think it's easiest to do that with actual code. So I'm going to go ahead and just uh, put this in and put this in over here. Okay, so uh, here we go with our, our piece again. So we have 4x and notice the format here 4x in range. So this piece and of course this piece, uh, this is this is how you set this up. So here's our syntax that we have here. We're using um, our, any type of variable here. So so x, you know, for this one, let's say. Uh, and so, oh, I changed these over, sorry. Let me just go and change these back to the way I had on the slide. Uh, so we've got uh, our first range, and you notice that we're opening parentheses in here, and we're saying, okay, five times. So what this is saying is, uh, for this particular piece as we're running through here, we want this to run five times. The range is saying, okay, I want this to run five times. I want you to print hello world. Okay, this just skips a line, obviously. And then we're going to come down here for Y. We're going to say in range, and you'll see this in a second, we want you to print high world and for high world we want you to start at the value one up to five okay so remember this is less than so you'll get to see that in a second uh and then this for this this particular one over here we're going to say for z we're going to say okay we're going to say howdy world it's going to um, start at one and it's going to go up to ten remember up to it's less than not including ten by twos Okay, so as we run through this and we see this execute, uh, I'm gonna hit next here and then I can just roll back up and well, actually I'll leave that on the screen. Beauty. Okay, so I can just hit enter now for each time I want to do this. So now here we go. So here we go. X starting at zero and roll this down here. Uh, and then as I hit enter, it will print hello world. Boom, there we go. Now as it goes through, it changes to one. So range does this for us. It's really, really nice. Uh, so this is a great, great way of doing things. You notice when it gets to this point, uh, it do, it's done, right? So it got to this point. It's not going to go up to and include five. You notice the value only got to four here, but we started at zero. So it ran five times, okay? So when I come down here, I'm going to skip a line. And now let's look at Y. So now Y is going to go ahead and get going. And it says, hey, we're going to start at one. So now if I say one to five, you might think it's going to print five times, but it won't. So it's going to say hi, hi, hi. Here we get to four again. Hi, and we're done. Okay, so you have to be really careful here. Um, if you're if you're setting them up this way, if you're starting at one, you have to go one past what you think. So instead of, instead of five here, you might say six. This one's accurate because I wanted this to print five times because it starts at zero. So if you're going to start at one, you've got to increase this. So I'd have to put six there. Okay, now let's go ahead and look at Z. So Z is going to come down. Z, if I um, actually let me change this back, hang on, because I don't want to make this smaller. So I'm going to call this one X again. I'm going to call them all X. I'll change this up a little bit. Okay, maybe that's why I did that before. Okay, so I'm going to run this again. I'll run this through so I can keep, keep X as my variable, keep this way down here. Okay, and I'm coming through. Here's my high again. Okay, now I don't have to call up the screen for Y and Z, so we're good. Okay, yeah, so now if I go, although it probably would have fit if I just bring this back up. Anyway, all right, uh, let's go back to uh, skipping a line. Now we're going to come down here. Now, X this time, as we go into the range, we're going to see it start at 1. So great. It starts at 1. Now it's going to print Howdy World. Okay, now look at the next value for X. Boom, it goes to three because we said by two. This is what this is. So this is my increments here. So if I start at one, the next number is three. Okay, so you might guess the one after that is going to be five, then seven, then nine. Then that's it because we we can't do anything else with it. So it's a nine. It won't go. It won't include ten and it won't go past ten. So I'm done. So this is a way of uh, setting these things up, and you'll see this is very, very useful. This way is very, very useful for doing things, and we're going to see some programs, and you get to practice that. Uh, and so you, you get to see all that kind of good stuff. I, I think it's fun. So uh, anyway, I know I'm a little bit weird with that stuff, but uh, but it's pretty cool. All right, so so that's um, that's that's that piece of range. Let's go ahead and go on to um, our, our next part. So when I click on the next slide, we have uh, using the target variable inside the loop. 
So if we were to look at an example here, so calculate the square of each number in a range. And let's go ahead and go down to the next slide so you can see this one. Uh, and we have this little piece. So as we take a look at uh, this particular code, and uh, you know it's, it's the next uh, next slide in there. In fact, if we take a look at this, so it's programming use a loop to display a table showing the numbers one through ten and their squares. So if we were to kind of just zoom it in on here, so you can see the, the code a little bit better, we have um, here's our, our statement in here, and this is just a simple uh, you know string that we have. Remember the backslash t. Uh, we're going to tab over, so this gives us a nice little setup here, and then this just under to set it up as a little title, uh, and then take a look at the range statement here with the for loop. So we're saying for number, so this is our again just our variable. So for number in range one comma eleven, all right. So this is going to start at one, and it's going to go up to and include ten, but not eleven. Okay, so it's going to say I want to use, this is a new variable now, square is going to equal the number, which is this range value squared. Okay, so this is an exponent thing, so to the second power. Uh, and then it's going to go and say, oh, okay, now I want to print the number, so whatever this value is, tab across, just like this did, and then print the square value. And that's how this will work. So let's take a look at the code itself. All right, so here we go again. Uh, let me code this in. It's the same thing. So here we're going to print these numbers in here. Here's our exponent. And then we're going to print whatever this value is. It's going through each iteration. And the square value for each iteration is printed here. So if we were to walk through this, I'm going to say next. I'll move this down a little bit. And I'm printing the little title piece in here. And then we've got this range coming through starting at 1, finding the square of 1, which is 1. That's not too tough. Uh, and then we've got, uh, here's our first display. So we've got the, the number tabbed across and the square. So we're going to do this each time. So as I click through here, you'll see two will show up with four. Then our print statement will find, of course, three and nine. So here's our one through 10 is printing here. And the square values are printing all right along with it. So we're going to walk all the way through this. And you'll see as we get down here, we'll get to 10. And then we're done because we're, we're not going to include 11. Okay, so that's uh, it's a great way of using this as a value that we're going to mess with, uh, you know, through throughout this particular, uh, you know, loop. And then we've got another variable we're going to use. So we're printing all this stuff out. So you can do some really cool things with this stuff. It makes it uh, it makes it kind of fun. All right. So um, I, I think you guys will, will really like using this uh, as you go through. Okay, so let's let's keep going. So as I click on the next one, let's say that you don't know how many times you want the loop to execute, okay? So we're going to take range inputs from the user and set them up using variables, using a range function, and we're going to go ahead and uh, and let this work. So here we go with this. Let me show you the code, then we'll come back to this in a second. Okay, so let's go over here to the code. Uh, and in this particular one, you'll see that we're asking the user for an input. So here we go. So this program displays a list of numbers and their squares. So here we go with start. So, and it's asking for an integer, enter the starting number, and then we have end. So another end asking what the uh, highest number should be. Okay. So it's going to go through, do the same thing. So here we go with this piece right here. You'll notice as you come down, uh, now we're saying four number and range that has not changed, but you notice now we're using a variable for our start point that we're getting from the user right here. Also at the end point, we are using a variable that we got from the user here. Okay, now the end point, you notice this has a plus one here, because if the user says, I want you, uh, when it says, how high should I go? You don't wanna tell the user like, uh, you know, hey, go ahead and add one to your input and we'll include it. So if you want to go up through 10, then you have to enter 11 uh, just to make it work. So you don't want to do any of that. So you just ask the user, how high should I go? simpler for you to, to include if they would say, hey, I want to go through 10, to just add one here to make sure that it's covered, okay? And then and then we'll do the same thing. So let's take a look at this. So I'm going to hit next. Uh, program displays a list of numbers, blah, blah, blah. And then it's going to say, here we go, start. Enter the starting number. So I want to start at 7, let's say. Great. So I'm at, at 7. There's my start right there. And now if I come down here and it's going to say, how high should I go? I'm going to say 15. Okay, and I'm going to say submit. So start at 7, end at 15. So that's the same thing as um, if we were to, 
to go through this and say for number and range, and you just put seven comma 15 plus one would be 16. So this would be seven comma 16. And we've, and we've set that up for you, okay? So if I go next, it's gonna go ahead now and come down to this particular loop. And you notice the number here is seven. Oh, there we go. And it will walk through squares 49. And here's my print statement where it's going to print those out, just like we did above or that we did last time. So I'm going to go ahead and say next again. It's going to go to 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. So the user put the end value at 15, but we added one to make sure it was included. If, if the user would have put 15 here and we didn't have this plus one, then it would stop at 14. So just remember the range you works like less than it will not put that piece in there. Okay. So hopefully, hopefully that, that makes sense. Uh, and you know, and again, the codes, the links in there, so you can play with a little bit, change things up if you want, uh, to just to see how it goes. Okay. So you can also, so all this stuff has been counting up, right? Uh, we can also count down. So let's say, oh, I told you I'd go back to this. This is what I was talking about. Uh, the end cases um, range does not include the ending value, so add one. So that's the piece you saw in there. Uh, and that's really important so you don't miss that last value. All right, so if I come back over here and I click on this slide, okay, we can, and you notice the, the range values here. So if I'm using range here, obviously not a complete statement, but if we had range here, this is saying I want to start at 10, go down to zero by minus one. So this is our countdown. So it is possible to go ahead and do this as well. So you don't always have to count up. You may want to count down. Maybe you have some kind of a timer that you've got set up and you want to count down from the timer. So you're like, I want this to start at 10 minutes and show, you know, nine, eight, seven, all the way down. So this is one way that you can do that. Okay. So that's, that's kind of a fun one. The last thing we'll look at in this little section is our little augmented assignment operators, a little, um, Shortcut way of doing things. I, I like to look at them as, as shorthand operators or shortcuts. Uh, so we've we've been doing this before, but uh, I'll show this to you just just again really quickly. So you've got a little little piece like this. So we're using, for example, plus equals. You saw this early in the video. So x plus equals five. That's the same thing as saying x equals x plus five. So this is the same kind of thing. Y y equals is y minus equals uh, two here. Uh, so we've got y equals y minus two. All right, and, and on down. So anyway, so that's that's it. Uh, I, I know we've talked about it. I keep beating that um, beating that one into you, but uh, but but that's, I, I want you to be able to see this so you know what this means and, and try and get in the habit of using it if you're, uh, you know, when you're coding, playing with this. Um, I know a lot of people have been doing it this way and I do see quite a few of you using this style too, but, but, uh, but anyway, so just wanted to mention that one more time. All right, so that's it for this particular section. Uh, thanks.